Napconnect for Africa and the world is a one-stop source for information for life. Here today with a great, great, great delegation, prominent delegation from Nigeria, from the sports ministry, from the sports writers, from everywhere from Nigeria. This, this is massive today. Uh, I would have loved to introduce them by myself, but we have stopped that, starting from my interview with His Excellency, the Ambassador of Ghana, that people should not introduce themselves to our behemoth worldwide audience. Let me start by my left hand side, the great man sitting behind me. Please, could you introduce yourself to our worldwide audience? I was waiting for you to, <laughs> that whether you will say for me, Jesse, then I will say, you have introduced me. No, 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 I, I, I can't say that. <laughs> well, uh, my name is Femi Johnson. I'm the general manager of NTA Sports Nationwide, Worldwide. And uh, I want to say that this is my 26th year in service of NTA. I had earlier worked as, as editor and also as the head of politics for seven years in NTA before I moved to NT International and I worked for two years and I went to Ibadan to be the head of news before I was made the general manager in sports. So it's a great pleasure being here. So far so good, it's been a wonderful experience and I must say that we are delighted to be here. Thank you really very much for this wonderful introduction to our behemoth worldwide audience. Let me move straight swiftly to the next person. Yeah, good evening. My name is Ni Yali Bilshu. I started as a reporter, just like uh, he said, about 25, 26 years ago as well. And uh, I've actually covered all major sporting events you can talk of, either locally or national and international level. And um, to the glory of God, this is my third Olympics that wow. I'm covering. <coughs> That's good. And my talk, third Olympics I'm covering, and it, which brought me to Tokyo. I've never thought of coming to Tokyo, and I'm happy to be here. I'm currently the deputy editor of sports, Nigerian Tribune, and the chairman, sport writers, as of Nigeria, and also media committee member of Nigeria Football Federation. Thank you. What, what a wonderful uh, profile. I mean, th this is wonderful. And our audience today, they will be very, very glad to meet these wonderful uh, people with NAV Connects for Africa. And the world. Let me go to the next person quickly. My name is Cole Daniel, uh, a multimedia journalist uh, who have been privileged to work in the radio station, TV stations, and in print, even online media. Uh, my vast experience in the field endured me an award-winning journalist 2016-2017 at the Court and the Grand Sport Award. And again, this following year, 2018, I became the best journalist in Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, and there I was given best journalist in print media. And immediately after that, I became head of sport ITV. 2019, I got appointed as the media aide to the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sonny Dari. I am his media representative here in Tokyo in the ongoing Olympic, Tokyo 2020, ongoing Paralympic Games. I've been privileged to cover the World Cup, three World Cup, three Nation Cups, and I can count local leagues. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Um, our worldwide audience will be very privileged to watch this wonderful uh, uh, gentleman, very humble, to visit our studio here in Tokyo, Japan, to tell you who they are, or what they've been doing. Uh, so you, you stay calm, you stay still to understand why they're here today and answer certain questions that we have. It's a kind of digest. I want everyone to be very relaxed. I don't want it to be a kind of hard talk. It's not hard talk today, please. This is just, I mean, an interaction, a kind of interaction about what happened, what transpired in the Olympics. But before I go there, um, let, let me know your first impression of Japan. I, I wouldn't know if any of you have visited Japan before, or this is your first, first time. time. First time. I'm making a debut. <laughs> debut. <laughs> What's your impression of Japan? Your first impression of Japan? Of Japan, whether uh, good or bad, anyway. No, well, what I would <laughs> say is that uh, I've been to almost about um, 18 countries now outside Nigeria. I must say that Japan is the best. Let wow. me start with that. Japan, patch, 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 patch. What? The best in terms <laughs> of organization, the best in terms of humanity, the best in terms of welfareism, and equally to 
in terms of infrastructure, when you look at their roads, the connection of the roads, their buildings, they are marvel to watch. They made me to feel, oh, can we have something like this in Nigeria? But let me also say that in terms of also greeting, I thought we, the Yorubas in the Southwest, are the best when it comes to respect, but they floor me completely. Arigato. Arigato. That's my slogan <laughs> since I came here. You hear thank them. You, thank you very much. That is the Arigato. Yeah. Wonderful. You, you, you hear them play with you. They are so patient. Yes. They are very tolerant. Very resilient. Very, very. Yeah. In such a way that when you even do something that is wrong or that is not good, they correct you in a very low tone, in a soft manner. And you start to wonder, is it that they gave them training for this competition? We, Bet we, you we will definitely come there. Uh, 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 you know, it is in our agenda to let you know that uh, why the Japanese should be so, you know, resilient. Dotoku, we call it dotoku. That is a moral. They no, have, they, the, they, the moral instinct is they, so they, high. They, it's, uh, it's, let, it's, let me have other people's. Uh, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. first impression of Japan. Uh, we need, is there no bad impression? Let, 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 me, let me go to the next person. What's your first impression of Japan when you arrive here? Uh, well, let me start by saying before I even came here, I've never, I've never left Japan. I've never seen Japan as a country that I wanted to. Okay. Uh, that I wanted to visit or whatever. I've never, even, I've never even crossed my mind despite my profession or what have you. Yeah. But on um, arrival, the, the seriousness of going through the COVID test. We were at the airport for almost six hours. Almost put, almost put me off. But I now realize that the fact that they didn't do their job and they have to pass through that. The, the process. The, the process. process. Yes. And the, the way they handle it made me forgot the stress. We were treated with much respect. And uh, when we got to town, I finally got to adjust. I was awake till 5 a.m., thinking I was still back home. And this is this lasted for almost four or five days before I could. I don't think I even adjusted to that. So, I mean, they're moving around. I realized that I'll be, I'll be really dealing with Japanese. Even when we meet them on the road, 11 p.m., they were ready to assist you. The way they bow their head to respect you, it's really, really to sweat me off my feet. Because, I mean, if you have been to some places, they will not even look at you. You will feel that they will not even answer you. But here, you are friendly, especially the, the volunteers for the games. I, I, I mean, the different views about Japan. And I uh, heard that they have good education standard from my findings and the third best in economy, economy in the world, which will make it, every the country is stronger. So you can, I've already I've changed my mind. I can now rate Japan above 80. Thank, thank you. you, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> every Japanese will be very glad. I think we will subtitle this in Japanese for them to understand the level of honor being heaped you know, on them by their attitude. Let, let, let me know, um, let, let me know, uh, uh, Kola, Kola Daniels, uh, what, what, what do you, what's your first impression of Japan? I think the first thing I took, I took note about the Japanese is they are very, very meticulous. What did I mean by that statement of mine? They pay attention to details. They are detailed people. They are very, very meticulous. They are careful. They are vigilant. They are watchful. If you take a step, they have taken two steps. So they are, I, I see that in them, they are, they are watchful people. And apart from that, again, I truly observed that a, a typical Japanese has a high degree of moral. The morality aspect of man in Japanese can never be undermined or perhaps overemphasized. The Japanese, are, their moral upbringing is top notch. Back to what my colleague actually said, and I have that same uh, reasoning that it's only in the southern west part of Nigeria and Yoruba precisely that I have that morals. But I was amazed. I was, I was flabbergasted that, yeah, 
Japanese, even, they are more respectful than even my so-called, we are actually in from. They are respectful. They pay attention to details. They are intelligent people. They, are, uh, they don't have egoistic problem. They are not full of pride. They are meek people, very, very meek people. And that has really enchanted me. And I, that, that particular statement that travel is part of education, you cannot take that away. I begin to have another mentality of my coming here. I begin to feel that, yes, you could learn things from people. I have learned to be factual with you. Thank you very much. Then, uh, if you are asked uh, to introduce Japanese uh, culture and Japanese way of uh, education, educational system in Nigeria, will you adopt that? Will you vote yes to that? Uh, if yes. We are to, oh, honestly, I will tell you that with what I've seen, with what I've learned, yeah. I, I do see some of your students when they are going to school. Yeah, exactly. I do see their teachers. I will see them. The way they mix, you hardly know whether this is a student or, or a teacher, know that. and that's excellent for <laughs> yeah, me. And uh, from what I've seen so far, I would say that I think it would be a very good thing if Nigeria can come and learn a lot. Japan will serve as a role model, apart from the technological development exactly. that we know yeah. we are going to get. I am quite aware that Nigeria and Japan have a greater diplomatic uh, relation uh, from the inception of our relations. So I think uh, it would be nice, since you have observed this, uh, great men have observed that Japan has the highest level of uh, I mean, respect for humanity. They are resilient, they are patient, they can you know, help you in many ways. So it's, it's a, we learn a lot of, from them, a lot of things from them, very important. And uh, these ob observations are being made by high profile people in the media in Nigeria that understand that has visited many countries, not just that they are here, just uh, for the, as a freshman or just for the first time visiting no countries. <coughs> no, they are granted in many countries. So I think the Japanese people would be very glad to hear these uh, compliments of yours. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure they hear them by subtitling this, uh, what we call uh, this, uh, our interaction into Japanese so that while you speak, comes in Japanese so that they understand what you feel about them because our, we have our people there who can do that immediately. Well, uh, your time is very precious to us and our time is precious too. Um, let's now go into the Olympic and Paralympics. Uh, are you here for the Paralympic or for the Olympics? Paralympics. Paralympics. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So if, you, if you're asked to give Mac on the overall performance of uh, the Nigeria Paralympic contingents. What would be your score? Let me first take from my own angle. Yes. I would score them above average. Okay. Consider the fact of the numbers of contingents. Yeah. Exactly. 22 athletes. Only? Only 22, 22 athletes. athletes. Yes. Okay. Already six, good, uh, six medals in the kitchen. Three gold medals. Two bronze. One silver. And two world records have been broken in the Paralympic Games. Oh, really? So, could um, you mention the names of uh, the, who is the person who broke that record? Yes, What's Fola that? Shade Olua Femi Ayo okay. broke that record. Then Bosset too, Bosset they too broke that record. Two of oh, them, really? yes, with gold medal. Yes, yeah. gold medal, and they are presently world record holders in their category, different eighty six category, and as well added some down about. So they are world record uh, presently. Okay. And again, my interest is to know that if you have only twenty two athletes. But let me actually quote my principal, yeah. uh, Mr. Sonny Daly, the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport Development, who actually said, you must leverage on your strength yes. in everything you do. There's what they call SWOT analysis in business. Strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. Yes. So our, our strength is our competitive advantage going into this tournament, and that is Paralympics. Yes. And we have succeeded to carve a niche. This national anthem of Federal Republic of Nigeria, as this emblem symbolizes green, yes. was sung six good times in the Paralympic Games. Wow. And that is to say, at the verge of breaking the record, the national was sung. The person who won bronze medal, the national anthem was sung. And at that point in time, that shows symbol of unity. That shows, that shows symbol of excellence. Yes. That shows your country has gained what they call universal recognition. Yes. So we can never undermine the power of the medals we have in our kitchen. 
As of yesterday, we are 21st in the medal table. Consider the numbers of uh, countries, well, I think more than 100 countries came for these Paralympic Games. But we are 21st in the, uh, if, not for, if not for COVID-19, if not for COVID-19, the, the, Paral uh, uh, Paralymp uh, the Paralympians do not actually have enough time to get together. I think we will have been boasting of more, more medals than now because our best Paralympic Games ever was last Paralympic Games, talking about Rio de Janeiro 2016 where we had eight good medals, two silver and two bronze, all together medals at 12. And we went with a uh, uh, large contingent than what we, we have here, here in Tokyo. Now, presently. Okay. So I think I scored our Paralympic athletes more than six out wow. of ten. Thank you very much. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful uh, score for them. Is there anybody who have uh, uh, an alternative uh, score uh, better than what he has explained? I, mean, I think he said he scored uh, above... Uh, 70? Yes, talking about uh, above, yes, above, yes, above average. Above average, yes. Yeah. Like you said, without dwelling much on it, going by the fact that uh, you are not here with many athletes yeah. due to the restriction by the organizers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think they fell very well. <coughs> we need, we need three, three, three gold medals, one silver, and two bronze medals. It, says, it speaks a lot. And another, another, another highlight of the games is our participation in the in rowing events. That was a young man that participated, yeah. and he, I think by ranking, he should be ranked, he should be ranked maybe sixth now. And he came to this game as a first timer. Started rowing nothing less than ten years ago, less than ten years ago. Okay, and he's been able to conquer Africa mm -hmm. now. The Olympics, so that's a plus. And uh, we have some uh, athletes in uh, some <coughs> athletes in athletics that one place fifth in the world now okay. and fourth. No, we could do better. So I still I'll give them 75. 75. 75, 75, 75. That's wonderful. Yeah, Femi, yeah. let me let me friendly call you Femi. So what what do you what, what's your opinion? Well, for my score, Nigeria did. Averagely well, that's what I would say. Okay. Averagely well in the sense that um, at least we were adequately represented. We made our mark. It's just that when you look at the previous performance of Nigeria in this competition, mm -hmm. particularly in the last edition which was held in Brazil, yeah. and you compare it with what they have now, you see that it's a little bit below. Be that as it may, one can say that we can attribute it to many factors. Yeah. COVID is one factor. Two, they didn't have enough time, which we also know the reason why. So I would say that, uh, well, they've tried their best. It's just that what we need to do now is that we should learn from what we have witnessed here and see what we can now do to make sure that Nigeria does very well in the next edition of Paralympic Games. We can't just afford not to be at the top. In the paralifting event, we are noted for being the best. Even the World Paralympics Committee, they acknowledge Nigeria as one of the best. And even in the way we have been outstanding so far, the records that we have set are records that are impeccable. Impeccable in the sense that you see an athlete, imagine world best, yeah. and the person coming second is having about 10 kilogram gap. So even if they say, they should come for next edition. Who knows whether that one will still be able, <laughs> be able to, to lift <laughs> what she has done. She will improve on what. So exactly. what we need to do is to improve more on our performance. And uh, we need to encourage them. We need to let Nigerians know that this is the time for us to encourage the Paralympics. Uh, Ulufemi Ayo, the girl that won, the, that broke the record in the World and Paralympics Paralympic event. And when I was interviewing her, she said, I said, what would you want the president to do for you? She said, it's not about me. It's about we, the Paralympians, we, the disabled, we that are half-bodied. The president should find a way of accommodating us and making us to feel better. How do they feel better? Maybe in terms of remuneration, yeah. maybe in terms of exactly. where, what they eat, in terms of where they stay. Particularly where we are. Yes, where, exactly. that, 
the president should do something for them. And I believe that the president is a very nice person. He's a sports-loving person because for him to have made sure that this competition holds and we come, he shows the kind of person he is. So I believe that we can still do more for them so that they can be happier. Thank you very much. I think uh, at this juncture we need to mention the names of uh, the athletes who have made us proud. And uh, again, the ones, uh, you know, uh, quickly please uh, let us know that and then we at least we'll give a hand of applause for them. Uh, it's important um, that we recognize the them. First, the first athlete yes. who actually, um, the first athlete who actually uh, gave Nigeria uh, the first medal, as far as this competition is concerned. Her name is Omolayo Bosse. Okay. Women's category of subject 9 kg. She won a gold medal in the Grand Style. Thank you very much. Follow suit is not a person, but talking about yes. okay. La Ogun State Latifat Tijani in women's category of 45 kg. She won a gold medal. Another sighting athlete. She, she won a gold medal, okay? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. That, that's another good. We'll continue to do it. Go ahead, continue. Then, uh, the captain of the team. Uh, the team captain who led other uh, Look at the national flag. Yes, the okay, team captain. The, you know, where okay. they are coming. Her name is Lucy Ejike, Ejike. six-time Olympian. Okay. Six, uh, six-time. Uh, six please repeat six, her name six, again. Yes, her six, name is Lucy. Lucy Ejike. Ejike, okay. Uh, six-time okay. Olympian. Okay. Last uh, last uh, Olympic gold medalist. Well, she won a bronze medalist. Oh, really? Yes, oh, really? 61 oh. kg. Yes. Then... We have an enter enterprising lady. I call her so enterprising because of her dexterity, because of the way her manner she d uh, does her thing when she gets to the uh, podium. Her name is not a person talking about Ibrahim Olaiton, followed with another bronze medal. Good. Ibrahim Olaiton followed another bronze medal in 67 kg. Follow suit is not a person talking about this lady in question who had a standing ovation. Who, but, who display what they call a world record. She broke world record. Her name is Oluwa Femiya, your follower Shade, that is her name, in 86 kg. She won a gold medal with a record breaking of 156 kg. Wow. Then, uh, the last but not the least, uh, I beg your pardon, I think I've called all the six of them okay. who have actually shown statement of intent here in Tokyo, Japan. Gentlemen, unfortunately, no lady. I would have loved to have one lady or two so that we put gentlemen and lady. <laughs> <coughs> May we give them a very big round of applause. And a standing ovation. Uh, yeah. yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is, it is, you see, when uh, one of my professors said, your, your, your success will remain a nation's success and pride, mm. while your failure remains your individual bad and self-disappointment. Mm. That's usually what he used to tell us. And uh, in our national uh, 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 pledge, we say the laborers of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Vain. to serve with heart and might one nation, bound in freedom, peace, and unity. I think sports is the only thing I think that can I mean, keep Nigeria, unite us more, make us, you know, united more, because I think every every Nigerian loves sports, Sport. and when you see your national flag, you know, rising above all others, this, <laughs> something magnificent, you know that, it, quite an electrifying, you know, you know your spirit mm -hmm. will, uh, be lifted. will be lifted, so you say, yes, that's my country, that's, that, that's my country, so I was asking, why is it that you know African athletes are not being shown on the television? Why I ask that question is that I always love to take challenges on areas of diversification, on areas to invest more money. Because if it is buying, you know, you know, developing a television station that will be showcasing all African athletes, then you, most of you should let us know the, how to do that and where to invest that so that we will have the, part, the right to show so that every African must watch every African you know sports in in Olymp during Olympic or World Cup, you know we are being relegated. So what is the secret there? Just let's let's know this briefly and uh, 
know areas we can invest money to make sure that Africans watch all games being, you know, Africans are being uh, presented. Please. You all know that uh, when it comes to sports, yes. rights comes in. Exactly. And for rights, it's very expensive. Okay. But it's not as expensive to say that uh, Africans cannot come together and pay for these rights. Yes, I'm we have people who can, because pay by who, can, who, can, yeah. who, can, who can do that. Yeah. But I believe that uh, what we can do is we need to first of all let people know that this is what is actually happening to Africans. And we are the one that is losing. Because if we are not shown, those who are breaking records are not shown. Yeah. How do we improve ourselves? Exactly. How do we go for the motivation? motivation. So they, we need, maybe what we can do is uh, aftermath of this um, Paralympics, we will try and see if for us, those of us who have come here to cover this event, we will try and do a post-mortem analysis and submit our reports to the appropriate quarter and do some other reports too so that this will be part of what we mentioned that they should look into. For instance, but in Nigeria, I can assure you that all this was shown on television and we have a daily report on activities of Nigeria. But it's not only about Nigeria. We have some other African countries yes. too and we need to showcase them. So there's a central platform that... That can easily do it, that. So yes. Just like the way your organization is doing, exactly. showcasing Africa and making Africans to know that whatever it is that anybody can do in any other place, we in Africa, we can do it. Yep. I was marveled at what I'm seeing here, the studio here, the production capacity, and also the level at which we are beaming this thing to people. So we can do it, and uh, we'll step it up, and we'll see on our own part what we can do. Let me allow my colleagues to, to make some comments on that. My own view is a, bit, is a little bit different. In the sense that <coughs> this is purely, if you, don't, if you don't mind my words, but I just want to be careful, and this is, this is purely a, a deliberate, deliberate act on the part of the so-called power blocks. You see, they, they, I don't want to call it as uh, tribalism or racism. Yes. In most of the major events, they don't normally focus on African countries, except when necessary. If, if an African player is playing the final against a Chinese player, or a Japanese player, they'll be forced to show it. Okay. Because it involves their yeah, whole people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It involves their whole. That is mm -hmm. one. And that is the major thing that is causing problem. Then the commercial value, they look at it, of what benefit is African country bring to them? No. They rather project. The, the, they look at the commercial angle. Probably, exactly, yes. Probably, probably if, can I mention name of companies? Mm, yeah. If Nike, yeah, Adidas, of course you can, you can. Why if not? Nike, yeah. Adidas, Puma are sponsoring Mr. Femi Johnson. Puma wants his brand, its brand, to be on, on the world map. Yeah. So, that is it's commercial. Good. That's commercial value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once we have Puma, you know that once it's shown on Japanese TV or Chinese TV, it is everywhere. So those are the two areas. The only way, or the way out is. Our own people that are in these committees, either IOC, that is National Olympic Committee, exactly. either the Nigeria Olympics Committee, mm -hmm. either the African Games Committee, they should be more proactive. They don't just go there, they don't, do, they don't do attend their meetings or conferences and be sit down, sit down look. If, if you are in the, in the committee, you should be able to let them know that you are here. There's no way, look at color. Your presence should be felt. That is exactly. True. Look at yeah. color. You can think you can shit sh sh because of his, his uh, stature. No. Color will stand up against you no matter how tall you are. So you, you will know that color is here. Yeah. You know that somebody is here. Not that just sit and say yes. You just say yes. They say no. You say no. No. By, so by doing that, you, nothing good will come to us. So they have to be more proactive Thank you. and that area, they work on it. Professor Patrice Lumumba, a great mentor, often says that we need to be the diner 
you choose whether you want to be a diner or you want to be a supper. You see, um, why I threw this question is for, I mean, the Africans to know that we have grown to fix our own table and invite people who, will dine, who can dine with us. I have always used this word that Africa must be developed by the Africans in collaboration with the international community. But we must set the pace, we must make some decisions. Of course, sometimes it becomes a little late. Politics is a battle of ideas, I totally understand that very well. But we can invest. If you let us know, we need only information about all these things. If we can build a platform and own the patent and own the platform as a developer, approved under iPostro and Google NavConnect, and we have the opportunity to showcase whatever we want, build new functions and bring them up so that on the app we can build any function, blockchain, name them, everything. So we can as well we have an independent or from the private sector build a system that can, you know, allow our people to watch their contemporaries, to watch Africans perform greatly. And that will be an engine, a catalyst that will engineer these young generations to know that, oh, uh, uh, something, somebody have gotten gold with a world record, an African. I will say, oh my goodness, oh, if, if she can do it, I can do it too. But if they have no access to see these things on the television, to see them whenever they want, even if it's pay-per-view, yeah, I mean, of course, those is investment. You, you, of course, you make investments, you need uh, dividends, you need money. But y y the problem is not that. The problem is the information. To know exactly, like you said, our leaders who go there and just sit down and allow these people to do whatever. I learned this American company that owns the, virtually the patent of all these, uh, you know, uh, what is going on, like you just you said. Yes, yes. And you, if America doesn't come to Olympics, probably that Olympic might not hold. You see, yes, the generation is like that, we understand. We can collaborate with them. We're not saying that they're not doing well, but we can collaborate with them and then build an institution that be timeless in its relevance for the future generations of Africa and for ourselves too. So that when our people are performing, our people can watch them. We have Wow Wow, we have all these uh, you know, different uh, platforms that showcases you pay, you pay by fee in Africa, you have them. So on the Olympic platform, we can still no buy for this. If any of you have any information about what we should do to build this kind of platform on top of originally the ones we have, uh, in fact, such information will be very vital. And then we'll discuss them. I know that uh, Africa has a platform for broadcasters which is called AUB. Okay. That AUB can also be assessed. I know that uh, okay. Nigerian Television Authority the organization with almost about all the African countries yeah. with their national TV stations. So what we can do is uh, let's see what we can do to make sure that this organization probably reduce their money for brokers, right? Because they still charge some money. I, I made to understand that. If they can reduce that and give Africans this thing free, Oh, at let, let, let me let me help you. My my mother, uh, uh, charity is in uh, Naji, always tells me that any problem that money can solve is not a problem. Mm. And I kept on watching that word. That for instance, and anything given to you free, you cannot finish paying for that thing till you die. Mm. Therefore, let them charge money and let us know the amount of the money they want, uh, the amount of money they want. If it is something one person cannot do, one person cannot achieve, we can be 30, you can be 40 to provide that platform. Maybe what we can do is yes, uh, to make a research for, for NAF, NAF Connect has yes. set a piece exactly. for others to follow. Thank you. You can equally move forward yes. by starting right from now when they finish this competition. What next? How do we make the coverage of the next edition of both Olympics and Paralympics more accessible well, to Africa. Africans? And by the time you assess the AUB, by the time you assess some of these organizations, you just discover that. First, I, I give you that responsibility to find out the modalities. And and it then comes let's work together. Go ahead. Uh, it yes. comes with previews and reviews. Okay. You, you preview the Olympics and the Paralympics. Then you review it to know. Then you have your general assessment. What is the significant impact in the society? What are these costs 
the, Af the black skin. If we do this, if we bring it back to life to ensure people work, what are the 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 what will be the usefulness yeah. to the society? So if we come and as well put all the outline down, we we'll, we'll have an headway. The generation is ours, and uh, the, uh, there's no other way to do it than the knowledge you have. We, I'm ruled by figures. I'm an investor, but I will invest rightly. You get the point. When we check out the modalities, the pros and cons, how does it work? Mm. And the, yes, okay, this is what we should invest to get this done, so that Africans can work fellow Africans, excel in different fields and sports. Then, of course, we're not start thinking on how to achieve what they need, because, of course, somebody must have grabbed the patent. Somebody must have grabbed the technology that will enable you to shoot these things. So let's not drag that. Uh, please, uh, let it be an assignment for all of us. Mm, yes, uh, uh, yes. let's, uh, uh, Femi Johnson and uh, <coughs> Daniel and uh, uh, Nii, uh, I'm sorry I'm calling you with only your first names and I didn't go to the second name. Okay. Um, please take note that if you have any information regarding to what we will make again to make sure that Africans, what fellow Africans excel in different fields all over the world, particularly on sports, then let us know them and know the modalities and what it takes. Yes, please. Let's, let's look at it this way. Okay. There will be there will be nations cup next year in Gambia. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? So, yeah, yeah, fine. There will be nations cup in in uh, mm -hmm. nations cup in Cameroon next year, January, February. Okay. And uh, if there is no other championship before the end of this year, yeah, we could start looking towards that. Even just to start with that is African Africa. Yeah. We could start with that because there are some. We have athletics world championship, championship. We have basketball. We have all these championships. And next year, July as well, there will come away games in the Birmingham uh, City in Hingan. So we could start towards that. That that major, major event. Just like we said. Yeah. And uh, Kango, we have a uh, we have a uh, we have a GM here. And we have two electronic uh, guys here. So I'm sure in due course we will come up with something that will that will give us a leeway and for discussion, for yes. discussion, on exactly. And we, we, we get it right. I, I promise you that we will see what we can do about it. Incidentally, okay. too, I'll be in London in about two weeks' time. Okay. Maybe I will use that opportunity to go to Benham and find out some things um, exactly. what they need to do. Yes, we need so to. that we, if we, what I believe in is, if we start the preparation on time and we work on it, ah. it, will, yes. it will be easier yeah. than Definitely. when it has. Come very close and they are scrambling. They are lamenting over <laughs> what we cannot <laughs> do again. What we we so don't have power. Uh, hey, you know that. I will so be surprised if the content has not been sold out for 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 Birmingham games. Eh? But if we can if get, we know, if we know, I'm I'm telling you something. If we can get the full rights, yes. If we can get the rights to cover to showcase African, eh, but yes, exactly. exactly. That's, that is it. African, not events. African, not African yes. is playing. If we playing against a Japanese or a playing against anybody, must let, be, it must be I think like the good one, like the good one, it's a yeah. welcome development that we yeah. can as well get to show Africans uh, matches in respect of the game mm. so that uh, African will be able to know yeah, that they can exactly what is going on. Yeah, information is powerful, very important, and it's quite knowledgeable. Yes. So, Sports. Uh, some people ask some pertinent questions. That how is this thing being done? Why is he asking? Why is she asks? Because he or she did not have the idea. Yes. And he or she is watching it. He will be able to. Learn you must imagine yeah, every time. Yes, he will you be know. able to know what and what is needed in that kind of sport. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, let, let us not linger there. Uh, we have gotten what we want, and uh, uh, I think uh, by God's grace, we will make a headway to improve the lifestyles of our people. Um, let me delve into, you know, little uh, uh, questions that might interest you or not. I mean, there's this viral uh, news in, in Japan media that says 10 Nigerians were disallowed to participate in the Olympic and uh, in the Olympics and subsequently sent home. What was the reason behind their disqualification? In fact, they met, they, the mayor people doesn't understand what is going on there. What happened? I, I think as the media aid to the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport Development, exactly. yes. I'm privileged to speak on this matter. You see, it, um, I think 
I, I wouldn't want to apportion blame. Yeah, no. But it's it, 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 it just administrative lapses okay. from the background staff. Because some of those athletes, it, no, partially all of them flew from the United States to Japan. So they had to have conducted their last series of tests before coming to the, uh, Japan, which they failed to. On getting to the tournament proper, the officials of the tournament realized that some of them did not conduct the last test because we are supposed to do two, three tests before. Yeah, so for them not to conduct the last test, that was why they were disqualified. It's not the primary role of the uh, secretary of the team, the background staff of the team, rather, to be able to know whether, because they will submit all their test scripts, and that person, the, the person who plays that role will be the person to submit it to the officials of International Olympic Committee, I, I would see. Yeah. And when uh, those of, uh, uh, paperwork is not there, you have failed the, the ethics below that guys the game. The losses, you must come with social testing. That was why they were disqualified. Uh, it, it's not something my principal actually uh, no. uh, appeal about. The committee has been set up for that negligence of duty. Okay. And um, um, I think the committee is here to bring uh, the report to the Honorable Minister. And at that point in time, the person in question who that lapse is actually emanated from his team. We will, we will cut to order okay. or buy, uh, bring, uh, bring, to book. Uh, bring to book. Yeah, so, such uh, uh, mistakes, uh, to be very honest with you, is, is uh, unallowed. You just, you're supposed to blame on the state. That is, uh, you don't blame individual. You don't blame, you blame the people that are responsible, mm -hmm. you know, for taking care of those things. Well, in the first place, where were they invited? And when you invite an athlete, you make sure you pass through the right channel. And there are people who are responsible in passing through those right channels to bring them here. And when they come here and uh, they were asked to go, you now find out that uh, it, it demolishes the name of the country. And not many Japanese will understand what you just explained. This is the problem we have. And they say they send 10 Nigerians home. That would be the caption. Ten Nigerians deported because no reason, and then he keeps on, you know, putting in bad name into the Nigerian uh, you know, diaspora. Okay. Yes, what happened? What happened? Now you have explained it, but originally this this lapse is supposed not to happen. Is it? Is it? It's uh, quite, 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 quite costly. Let me yes. let me let me, costly, support, yes. let me support Kola. Okay, it's quite sadly costly and very very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm sure. Just like you said too, your yeah. minister set up a committee to look into it. Even though without the committee or whatever, we know where the problem came from. But just for us to do the normal thing. You see, at times, at times, we leave what's supposed to do undone. Mm -hmm. And on the other way around, the athletes too, I will blame them. Even though color world of passion, passion blame, they are blame them. Okay. When the officials here are at fault too, the athletes, when they go out, the rule says if you leave your country to another country for an event, mm -hmm. when you get to that country, you inform the officer back home that you are in Kenya. Yes. For an event, then in Kenya you go for test. You get, yeah, you, you, yes, yes. you go for a test. Yeah. You do that test. You just take some of the test back home or you keep it or send it to whoever. But most of these athletes now traveled for such events without even telling their people. The official informed that they have gone for social assignment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I remember if I'm if I'm, if I'm right, they missed just three three of such tests. Three. Oh really? Three. They've done not other, even one. Not, they've done others. Okay. Okay. Let me be that they are supposed to do like six, seven. Mm -hmm. They've done the now. They, were, they didn't do the remaining three. Thinking they have, they have, they have, they are, they are, they are okay. They are okay with it to participate with those ones. Of those ones. Of On they were now. Unfortunately, it backfired. Wow. It's really embarrassed the nation, and it's always almost caused a lot of crises back home. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody really liked it. Nobody really happy. I know not many people are aware of. The reason, just like you said, mm -hmm. Nigerian deported, Nigerian <laughs> suspended, <laughs> Nigerian banned. <laughs> yes. And when you say Nigerian were, Nigerian actually were banned, 
it's like they were bound for doing something. You, you terrible. know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's so unfortunate. But I'm unfortunate, sure yes. such will not. Anyway, the bottom it, line, yeah. the bottom line is that the minister, you know, you know, has set an inquiry mm. to look into the matter so that uh, it will never happen again. It's because it has happened sure in the first place. So that's uh, why we can bring it be. back. Mm. But you know, I think the minister should be also aware that the captions of or the thumbnail of different media outlets, they want to sell their paper. Of course, yes. And they utilize every opportunity that comes to them to create news. So yeah, I think uh, that there is need for a publication on you know their their research, what, what they have uh, their findings officially. Thank you very much for clearing that air. I think most people who were in doubt of what happened will be very, very happy right now listening to us. Again, there's another media frenzy uh, that happened. Uh, I, I didn't get that clearly, but I want it to be clear here if you know the answer. Mm -hmm. that a, are you listening to me? Uh, that mm -hmm. a Nigerian athlete qualified for final um, for the fact that he came here with only one you know, outfit. <laughs> uh, was watching, was watching. Kola was watching, was watching. He's or her, I don't know that a, a man or a woman. He's a guy. He's a he's a guy. guy. Yeah. Was watching his uh, outfit for the final because he didn't have another one. So, mm. and based on that, look at the major problem that Puma withdrew their sponsorship oh, for no. Nigeria. No, no, uh, no, please no, uh, throw more light on that topic. It, it, it's now. quite contradicting. Okay, okay. I stand to be corrected. As I'm talking, I'm speaking here as an authority who was an eyewitness. Before they left the shore of the country, talking about Nigeria, I forget precisely, every athlete who represent Nigeria were kitted, were given the uh, uh, asswear, the trans suit, the team jersey. You see, that uh, the, 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 the guy in question, uh, uh, I forgot his name now, uh, were given those. Things, the gadgets for yes. preparing kids. It is the role of his federation. Let's say we have Ambo Federation, Basketball Federation, his own federation, okay, okay. to give him the jersey. Just like Super Eagle of Nigeria is playing football match. Mm -hmm. It is not the Minister of Transport Development that will give jersey to Super Eagle. No, it is a federation, federation okay. that, will that controls whatever yeah, that, that will come. give him the kit that is going to be. So his kit, the one that the uh, Ministry provided for him, is the one that all the team Nigerian contingent, in respect of your sport, you have. The one you use for your match pass, the one you use for closing mm -hmm. ceremony, the kids official, or, yeah, official way. Yes. But the jersey to compete, it, you know, it differs. Oh, the okay. jersey for athlete might not be the jersey for someone who is doing short foot. Exactly. The jersey for person who is short foot might not be for someone who is playing basketball. Mm -hmm. So it is not the work of uh, his federation. So uh, if, let's assume his federation even gives him one, because let's assume, which is not true, mm -hmm. let's assume his federation gives him one. They are so called. They are so called national dignity and national protection. Okay. There's nothing bad. You washing your jersey. Everybody yeah, yeah. wash. Yeah. She is, even less than they give you fifteen. By the time you use thirteen or fourteen, if you don't have anyone to wear, you wash now. Nah. Exactly. Washing is not a crime. Yes. Yeah, it's not, it's not all, so yeah. you making a statement out of it becomes a crime because if you if you are actually not being crafty or you don't want to bring something out of that. Why Why is it that you're the one who was watching the jersey and you're the one doing yourself the video? Yeah. And you post somewhere. And there's sense of conspiracy there. Okay. Am I communicating? Yeah, we're very well. There's we're a sense of conspiracy there. And secondly, national dignity, national interest. Mm -hmm. If he watches the jersey and he, and he doesn't have enough jersey to wear, there's a channel to this. You channel it. To your federation secretary, secretary yes, that, to the look at I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. With this yeah. Not to put the, the country into a state of disrupt. So what happened was what I told you. Yeah. Therefore, the Puma Day. So it, the responsibility is for the uh, federation. It's not. It's not for the federation. The federation, okay. Yes. That the person belongs to. Yes. The national, the Nigerian government, uh, or what you call ministry, it, the yes. ministry. Yes. Ministry. Yes. I suppose. Is only to provide you the national yes, outfit for yes. official, uh, I mean, ceremonies. Ceremonies, there. Yes. Okay, okay. So there's two different things. There's two different things. And then uh, the addition there that Puma withdrew their uh, 
uh, their sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Was it right or You see, no, it's not no. because of. It's not because uh, of that. It's, yeah. because it's a different thing entirely. It's a different thing entirely. Different thing. Okay, good. Once it does not concern that, mm -hmm. so we, we leave it there because uh, uh, when things happen, why are we trying to say that? It's because, to be very honest, we say, uh, you know, hoodlums sometimes create bad image, few bad individuals create bad image for Nigeria. It's not only those few bad individuals. These little things also create bad yeah. image. It's the wrong thing. Yes. Thank you very much to the world. Uh -huh. and because in Japan, they hold Nigeria in a very high esteem. Nigeria is a big country. Nigeria is a very, you know, you know, oil producing company. We have money. Then why is, uh, you know, people coming here with only one jersey? And nobody is there to explain to them. And when that thing is instilled in them, they will believe it that way. And say Nigeria, this is so. If possible, we have this plan. Africanness for Africa is like that. We we only tell, we, we are we are not political entity. We are not any, we, to, we are for Africa. So we often air in Japanese the you know the opposite of the whole thing that tell them that this is what happened and this is not what happened at that particular time. So if you have such materials anytime, feel free to share them with us okay. so that we will now publish and say. This is exactly what happened during this time when this uh, uh, publication was made. Else, it will keep on sending bad information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that elaboration. Okay, now, finally, as you know, Africa have uh, hosted a World Cup in South Africa uh, before. Uh, uh, let me know if there are plans for you know hosting Olympic in Africa, in any of the African countries. So, you see, um have we made any attempt? I was privileged to speak with. No, no. <laughs> we should talk. I was privileged to speak with. Um, ne, ne, you were, you were, you were, you were, you were, you were <laughs> enjoying your laugh. I was privileged. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe because he's looking at it from the angle of Nigeria. Uh, of course, I said, uh, what I saw in Japan. No, 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 he, no, no, he's, no, he's no, on. He's no, on. No, wait. He's he's on. Yes, he, okay. yeah. uh, I was privileged to sit with the Secretary General of FIFA. Okay. Federation of International Football. I know, your association, yes. That was a month ago in Benin Republic where all the ministers in the West African region assembled. Okay. I was the representative of the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport at that conference. Okay. And that conference was talking about per African school games. Okay. How can we develop young talent in Africa from the school level and each country provide a uh, winner to come and play and meet at the national. Yeah. They call it Power African Games. The department is that, that'd be nice. Developing yes. them, catching them young. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the department has been set up by Confederation of African Football. So the Secretary General, back to what I said earlier, he said a vital statement. Yeah. He said the bulk of the great talents that the world celebrated today are from Africa. Yeah. And I asked myself, Sagumeni of this world, Mohamed Salas of this world, Samuel Tofis of this world, Didi Drogba of this world. I did buy of this world, culture of this world, kind of one cause of this world. But can we host that the subject matter? Can yes. we host what? We can. We need to do more. We must learn from the uh, egalitarian society like this. This is an egalitarian society. Exactly, exactly. An egalitarian society is a society where things are done accordingly. Exactly. And uh, Japan is not an exemption. If South Africa has hosted World Cup far back 2010, this is 11 years after. So we can. Countries like the North Africans, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, Egyptians, they can as well host. In the, in the West Africa, I'm proud to tell you, now within the space of one month, now first stadium has been renovated or built in Nigeria now, that met international FIFA standard. One in Oyo State, but now just been completed, there is going to be a match against the Slovenian team tomorrow, in that same pitch. We just, my principal, under the uh, public private, uh, private partnership, adopt an athlete, one of our initiatives in the ministry, has renovated Moshud Abiola uh, International Stadium in Abuja. That stadium is 95% completion now. So, the National Stadium Lagos 2 is about to be completed by my principal uh, under public and private partnership. Many stadiums have been erected in Daura, Kasfaba, uh, Kastina. Uh, what am I trying to say in this? We've got Nothing less than 12, 14 stadiums now that has met FIFA standard. We have good hotels in Nigeria. What we need to do, we we'll work on one, security, mm -hmm. two, crime rate, mm -hmm. three, put these hotels into sense of uniformity that will give the international body a standard. 
I'm, I'm not narrowing down to our own country. I'm not even talking about the African country now. <laughs> I'm narrowing down to our, our own country and the case study. If we can host Nigeria 95, that's a walk up. Nigeria 95. Nigeria 99. Nigeria 99. 99, 99 yes. That's a walk up. Uh, is, is that on the junior under, 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 under 20? Under 20 World Cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was 2009 under 17 World Cup. 2009. No, under, under 17. Yeah, yes, coach John Obu, Switzerland won that trophy. Uh, they, def they defeated the guy in the final. The likes of Stanley O'Coro, uh, uh, Little Messi. 2007. 2007. So, I, um, uh, I duly understand, Kola, uh, I duly understand uh, you, you have a high spirit in what you're saying and you have narrowed our you know, question down to the platform of Nigeria achievements and everything um, you know the world has gone scientific and uh, it's no longer just building stadiums uh, that matters but the organizational skills and the, you know how to you know like you mentioned hotels and everything the standard of the hotels and everything so I think uh, that's why I threw the question to be the whole of Africa because I, I, I believe actually one Africa too. Uh, even of course, we need we know our own country. Um, the major problem I think we have is in the area of that security. You said because in, as we are in diaspora right now, we are not security men, so we are sports people. Sports is very open for everyone, so we don't discuss security because uh, we are not police people. We are not trained to discuss security, but nobody wants to invest money where there is insecurity. Nobody wants to invest, come to do sports where you're not sure of your post, where you're not sure of anything. So a lot of, a lot of things needs to be done to meet up the FIFA standard. Of course, you should know more than I do in this field when it comes to FIFA's regulations and regulatory measures on sending, you know, <laughs> Olympics to the biggest sporting event in the world to a particular country. So I think uh, uh, we we should be working towards that. Nigeria is the biggest economy. Is it the biggest economy in Africa, or have we been overtaken by South Africa? You know, we keep on rolling there. South yeah, Africa South taking Africa. and then we taking back. But in we, West Africa, we I think we are. Of course, if Nigeria removes their money from the African Development Bank, it won't work. Definitely. So let us not be answering a most populous nation. If they have nothing to show for it. <laughs> if they have nothing to show for it. If by right, I think we're supposed to hold a World Cup first before when it comes to performance in, uh, before South Africa. Oh, well, before, we, can, uh, we, we, we have we hosted two. Uh, we have hosted two. No, no, no. You are, you are hosting Junior World Cup. And junior senior World Cup two. and Senior World Cup is still World Cup. Uh -uh. Whether it's Junior or Femi, Senior, I it, is the same, same, it, is, it, is, it is the same viewers that will watch it. It is the same people that will play. <laughs> the only thing different is just the age. Messi will not come there. Ronaldo will not come. And, uh, but, <laughs> but don't forget that uh, the same Messi you are talking about yeah. was in Nigeria 99. He was in Nigeria in 99. Yeah, he played for Nigeria. When, when, when against Nigeria. Huh? But that's now, uh, it is a gradual thing. Yes, you I see, we, I don't want us to. No, no, no. Let, let, let's see yes. something from Nigeria. Nigeria. This question wasn't for Nigeria. Okay. It's for Africa. I know. <laughs> uh, let's see something uh -huh. from this angle. Okay. We might have our deficiencies. It does not mean we don't have the capacity. Yeah. We do have. Yes. We do have this capacity. Mm -hmm. But you see, these people that you are talking about, the Europeans, the world body, they have their own clique. They have the way they do their things. Mm -hmm. They know right now, as I speak, yes. they know we know the next country that will host the World Cup. The yeah, it's Qatar, next, I think uh, Qatar. Qatar. After Qatar, they know who they will get. Okay. understand, thank you very much. Let's not drag this too much. I do understand the world politics. Exactly. Uh, that's why President Barack Obama says politics is a battle of ideas. And sport politics is is also oh, is terrible. Is than what you see <laughs> between political yeah, yes, parties. Yes. If you if you are an insider, you know for us we we, we are we are not, we are we are just a little bit at the corridor of what is going on supporting our people. So um, if people tend to play politics, we raise our own ante. It's very important. It is because politics in every family. Yeah. There is politics in even in your house. Yes, no. Yes. So don't blame people. Raise your ante. 
that's what I'm saying. I don't mean you should uh, be fraudulent or. <laughs> or okay, we will raise we, your we, hand we, we raise our politics. Auntie. We raise our hand in politics. Yeah. But uh, you should know that uh, it's not easy for us. Yeah. What all these countries are boost, uh, can boast of. We cannot boast of them, they will talk of certain things, but let's okay, leave that. Let's, 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 leave let's talk that. about it. And then we leave the studio. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, now, uh, to be honest, you have thrown light in most of the uh, difficult uh, you know, problems uh, or the news we have uh, received. Uh, Nigerians were so worried, and I'm sure once they want this, now they, um, uh, Mr. Kola Daniel has, uh, to be honest, cleared uh, a lot of air on those uh, crucial matters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I now uh, call it a, a, a quid, uh, let us uh, know if you have any question to ask about Japan, any just uh, general AOB, which is uh, any other business. You have, before I ask you to send your good way message to Nigerians and the Paralympians. Um, yes. I don't know. I need to ask you one or two questions. Go ahead. Um, Not on personal matter basis. So you, you should be on should be on the, uh, your position as president of the Nigerian community. Thank you, thank you. On your president of the Nigerian community. Yeah. Yeah. No, just ask them any question you want. Uh, let's. Okay. I don't want to record. Let me record. Oh, to record him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so something. I'm doing something. But the guy is recording now. He's we'll recording, no us. problem. We'll, we'll give us. Uh, yes, yeah, so of course, of we'll course. We'll we'll let's do it this way, sir. Uh, let us leave. So that only you. Uh, no, 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 no. You can't never leave. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, what I want to ask you. Yes. Um, in two minutes or one minute. Go ahead. Who is Chief Energy? Yeah. Then, the Nigerian community in Japan. What we do? What we say is the relationship between Nigerian community that you had. I know, I'm, I'm sure you have maybe Yoruba community, whatever community, Edo community, that are Honda. Nigeria, under your office. Yeah. What is what we say? Will be the, what we say is the relationship between all the all the all the ethnic groups, the position you held, yeah. and at large with the with the Japanese community. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a wonderful question. Let me first and foremost inform you, using you as a plural noun yeah. message, to a goodwill message to the Paralympians and to the Nigerian government who sent you here. Please, one by one, so that we can now conclude. In, in a brief okay. conversation. In, in conclusion, uh, yes. let me say that uh, for and, the and remaining thank events... And thank NAF Connects for at least creating this platform and okay. pledge collaboration. Let me first of all start with NAF Connects. Yes. It's wonderful. This is an excellent organization, and uh, from today, I pledge my support, my loyalty to this organization. Thank I you am one much. of the members. In fact, if you want to do the next election, put my name there. I don't don't ask me <laughs> because they will tell you that you should not give me any post. Uh, I don't ask uh, Kola. No, Kola, Kola will say me. I should give you. Uh, uh, Kola, Kola uh, is my friend. And Niji is not my friend. Hey, so, Niji is your good friend though. Niji. He has told me every news, every information. <laughs> Okay. Uh, just, 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 just. He has given me the whole. That so I, let me, let me, let me say congratulations and kudos to your organization. They are doing a very good job. What I have seen, what I have had, what I've experienced, and what I'm doing now, showcase and also show that you have what it takes to get to where you are going. You are not really there. You are just moving, and by the grace of God, you will get there. Thank you. And uh, for the Paralympians. Those who have won medals, we say congratulations to them. Those who couldn't win, we say next time is another opportunity. Those who are still in the race, they should strive harder so that they will be able to get something out of uh, whatever they are doing. And uh, on our own part, let me say it's a privilege. We are opportune. And I want to thank the federal government of Nigeria, particularly the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports. Let me tell you emphatically, Without him, we won't be here. I won't be here for this event. He said it that, Femi, I want you to be in Japan. At the point even when the, we were to come for the Olympics, but uh, when the Japanese people were refusing yeah, visas yeah, yeah, and everything, due to the pandemic, I, just, yeah. I, just, I just lost to Bande. I zeroed my mind. But all of a sudden, I just had a call that, 
let me submit your data, please submit your passport, and before you know it, everything was done within five days. And here am I in Japan. I've eaten pandediam, I've eaten uh, eba, I've also eaten the, the best meal I've taken in Japan is from your wife. I couldn't imagine a Japanese woman preparing a Nigerian food like that. So I want to say thank you to her wherever she is now. God will bless her. And by the grace of God, your union, nobody, nobody, when I say nobody, not even in Nigeria, will disturb the union. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, Nisan, Nisan, Mr. Lee. Yes, sir. I have to say again, I mean, I said it all, yeah. but I will always urge the Olympians, like you said, to, to aspire to do more. Against next next games, I'm sure they have qualifiers and watch watch championship before the next games in uh, Paris. So I wish them best of luck. They should try to do. Those who have won, they should keep on winning. Those who did not, they should strive to win. And to the NAF Connect, I say a very big thank you for the opportunity given to me today. Stay blessed and enjoy your day. Thank you very much. From my side here. Yeah. I want to salute the doggedness of the Paralympians. I want to salute their <coughs> dexterity and the way and manner they have represented the green, white, green here in Japan. They should keep that temple. They should keep that never say die spirit of Nigeria up and be a worthy representative the way they've been doing in these ongoing Paralymp Paralympic Games. And congratulations to them once more, even those who have won the medals and the ones that didn't win any medals. Coming to Olympics is not an easy feat. So congratulations to every one of them. But to NAF Connect, I want to salute the brain behind NAF Connect. I want to salute the mitochondria of NAF Connect. I want to salute the man I call a distinctive figure worldwide. No other person but Chief Kennedy Nanji. Thank you for hosting, NAF, for hosting us. And thank you for showcasing this platform for Africans, most especially to have what they call information. Information is power, and you're bringing it to a corridor of respective individuals across the world. Congratulations for this immense achievement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are really very grateful. Um, our own duty is to make sure that we build an institution that be timeless, like I repeatedly say, with its relevance. Um, we cannot thank you enough for finding time to visit our little studio today. We believe that before you come next time, our studio will be like the one in your own office. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am really very grateful. Now, Connect team are very grateful to welcome you here today. And we pray that by the time you will be leaving for Nigeria, may God in his infinite mercy lead and guide your plane back to your destination. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.